What is up, everybody? Welcome back for another one. I won't keep you long. I just saw this article and I just thought we should talk about it. Breaking CB CBDCs and stable coins. EY advises banks to prepare for what's coming. And yes, they should prepare for what's coming because it's coming and it's coming quick, fast and in a hurry. Like I always tell people, the government moves slow until they decide to move fast. Think about that. Replay that, what I just said. Keep thinking about that because it's true. A new report from the EY highlights that the need for a policy change for banks to overcome business uncertainties regarding digital assets. And they should think about this and they should think about this quick. Um, Jerome Powell just mentioned a few days ago that he sees a world where the U.S. dollar and stable coins and CBDCs can coexist and that uh, CBDCs and stable coins are not considered threats. So it's real important that we watch what they do and not what they say, because I'm going to tell you this. The reason why I say that is because not too long ago, Ripple just released some paperwork, uh, well, not paperwork, but framework on um, the importance of CBDCs and the white paper for the XRPL, also the XRP ledger. It's really important, folks, that we actually pay attention because this is going to be the year of the CBDC. And, a, and you know, CBDCs are going to play a real important role on um, in the digital world. And it's really important that we um, hean in and focus on what this could actually mean. Uh and for those that don't know, a central bank digital currency is a digital currency used by a central bank rather than a commercial bank. So it's a currency that can bridge other currencies together. Um, and the main digital asset for that is XRP. If you type in the ultimate Brit, like if you type in Google, what is a bridge currency? XRP will pop up. XRP is one of the only if not one of the few digital assets that can uh, use and create cbds have cbdc's on their private ledger but let's get right into this article here it says big four accounting firm ernest and young has recommended that banks should change their regulatory perimeter to address the oncoming launches of state bank central bank digital currency cbdc's and private stable coins um EY's 2022 Global Regulatory Outlook highlighted the need for policy change that can help financial services firms overcome businesses' uncertainties amid uh, mainstreaming of digital assets and cryptocurrencies while acknowledging the uncertainty re regarding the digital asset market. The report states, if customers can keep their money with a central bank, they have no need for a retail bank, and firms will see their interest rate margins contract uh, presumptuously okay <laughs> um it also says ey recommended banking firms collaborate with regional and national regulators to foresee possible crypto adoption and proactively assess its impact on their businesses the report also indicates digitalization alternative data sources and digital assets as a potential factor to impact the regulatory environment so here's the thing folks we all know that a central bank digital currency is what's coming, okay? Central bank digital currencies are what's coming. Stable coins are coming. The U.S. digital dollar is coming. Back in 2021, back in March, when the bear flu virus was just at its um, prime, um, one of the uh, parties... I'm not going to say whether it was Democrat or Republican, but one of the parties uh, snuck in the actual U.S. digital dollar um, framework in the first relief uh, bill. Right um, now, after the revisions, it was it was then taken out. But people noticed that that bill, that the relief bill had the U.S. digital dollar. And that was back in 2021. This was back in March. Right. So, but since then, uh, some Congress, some SEC, some um, 
public investors, big wigs have backtracked on saying how stable coins and how CBDCs could be the end of the U.S. dollar. And now Jerome Powell is actually saying how they can coexist with the U.S. dollar. Folks, it's all a stage. The you know this market is a stage. This Ripple versus SEC lawsuit is a stage. This is just a way of of how to implement and slowly push in the agenda of being all digital. Um, you know, you know, for them to say, "Oh, well, I, I like my cash. I keep my, I like my paper." But it, at the end of the day, the U.S. paper dollar is backed by whatever the government actually says. It's it's since we've been taken off the gold standard, it it hasn't been the same since. And if you really think about it, we actually are digital right now, which is actually without it written in stone because all bank accounts are is just a a sequences of ones and zeros added together, subtracted together or whatnot. You know, we credit cards are digital. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things that were already there. It's just people don't like to actually hear the word digital or cashless because at the end of the day, we have to move as technology is moving. Like point blank period. We have to. The U.S. right now is stifling innovation, but I feel like there's a tight that's changing and that there's a new wave coming um that will ultimately so you know that will ultimately that will ultimately solidify how the u.s is going to play a major role we already know how ripple is going to play a major role and for those that don't know for, you know for my newcomers that are coming in from tiktok i welcome you thank you for subscribing to my channel from people from everybody that's coming from tiktok you know and you know, for the ones that have not subscribed to my TikTok channel, it's the same as my YouTube channel, TV with Trey. Make sure you head over there also. It's quick crypto education between 15 and 60 seconds, maybe two minutes. But um, when it comes to the central bank digital currencies, there's one party that I know of that's actually doing something right now, and that is the blockchain company Ripple, okay? Like I said earlier, they have been releasing framework after framework after framework and white paper, CBDC white paper, how the U.S. government should regulate cryptocurrencies, the difference between a utility token versus a meme token. There's just a lot of things that's going on right now that we should really be paying attention to because at the end of the day, there's Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. And let's back up for a minute. The Ripple, for those that don't know, and for my TikTok followers that are just coming in, the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit was a lawsuit saying that um, that that was char that that the SEC was charging Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson um, for uh, the sales of XRP between was I think it was 2013 and to 2017, something like that, to where they were saying that they were selling and marketing XRP as a security. But well, we all know that XRP is decentralized, and I believe that the Ripple only has what I think is between four and seven validator nodes, whereas the other validator nodes are spread out all across the world, which making which makes the XRP ledger decentralized and XRP decentralized. So there's no so if something goes down, Ripple does not have a say on what can be fixed. The people has a say. That's why that's that's the whole meaning of decentralized. Having something centralized means Ripple owns 145, 147 uh, no validators when that's not the case. Even the U.S. government had a no validator on the XRP ledger. I guess they want to understand what the XRP ledger was, how what it can do and how exactly it could change the world. I believe XRP is going to change the world. Um, XRP is a digital asset also used as a liquidity tool that can be used as a li liquidity tool to free up all the trap liquidity around the world. So for example, you um, and this may be a bad analogy, but it's, this, this is how it works. Say like you deposit a $500 check into your bank account. Uh, you have a present balance and then you have an available balance. Say you get $150 actually is going to be present. Well, it's going to take another 24 hours for the rest of your $500 paycheck that you just deposited into your account. It's going to take 24 to 48 hours. Well, with XRP, when XRP is used as a total pay payment settlement for the new financial system, it's going to be used as the oil for the financial system. It's going to happen instantly. You deposit $500, a check into your account, the $500 is going to be there instantly. 
because now they they'll be using XRP as a and it settles payments, it settles payments in three to five minutes. I'm sorry, not three to five minutes, three to five seconds. Oh no, we can't do three to five minutes. That's Bitcoin. But three to five seconds, that's XRP. That is the true value of XRP. That is what XRP can ultimately do and will ultimately do. And the whole thing is the reason why I brought up XRP is because the Ripple team right now is currently the only blockchain company that has been, that is professionally certified under ISO 222. Now, I talk about ISO 222 in another video, and I'm going to link that at the end, and I highly suggest that you watch it because it's really important that you understand. So a highly professional and, and a highly certified com blockchain company, we already know is Ripple. They, they, they're compliant under ISO 222. They're using they're going to be they're using XRP as that tool to free up liquidity across the world. So that's how I know that right now, as of November 2021, that is the only company that is actually going to be utilizing and that they're actually going to be utilizing and creating CBDCs on their private ledger. Right. So what that means is that um, they are going to be in this in this in this lawsuit, right? In this lawsuit that's happening, that's going to be over soon. I, I firmly believe it's going to be over soon. That's that's my beliefs. XRP is not a security. It is a liquidity tool that's going to be massive. It's already massive now because they're they're treating XRP like they've been treating gold. Um, they they said gold was illegal, so they had to buy back gold from everybody. But then what was it? Months to years later, they they resold it to the people, but at a higher price. That's exactly how it's going to be here. I'm not saying XRP is going to be two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, but I can guarantee you it's going to be three numbers and three numbers soon. I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your research. But it's highly imperative that you just understand what is happening. Ripple is going to play a major role in the new financial system. They're being audited to make sure that they're transparent. And that they're and to make sure everything is transparent, I'm telling you folks, even though this lawsuit is taking forever, new plans are coming out. There are new plans coming out, folks. Just hold on. I'm holding on. I've been I've been in the XRP market since early 2017. I am numb to it all. It's going on five years now. The XRP has not hit an all-time high. It is going to be bananas. It's going to be insane. Just hold on because once this lawsuit is over. CBDCs are going to be released on the XRP ledger. I mean, I mean, for crying out loud, we got the Bank of France um, playing with the idea of using the XRP ledger for CBDCs. We got the Digital Pound Foundation going to you know have the Digital Pound on the XRP ledger. You got the Bank of Bataan. Bhutan, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, that's going to be on the XRP ledger. You got um, the Republic of Palau, the first U.S. territory that's going to be utilizing a CBDC, and it's U.S. So do you actually believe that the SEC, if the SEC believed that the XRP was a security, do you actually believe they would allow the Republic of Palau to create a CBDC? Do you actually believe that? And then I actually, I'm doing some speculating because this is what crypto is. Crypto is a speculation a world. But I did some speculating and I believe that the Bank of Jamaica was actually going to be using the XRP ledger also. That's just speculation, folks. Um, it's just speculation. And I say that because a year ago, um, there was some news coming out about the, um, about the a central bank digital currency for the Bank of Jamaica, and that it was going to be on the Ripple, um, not Ripple, but the XRP ledger. That's just speculation, but I'm here to connect the dots when you can't connect the dots. And then you also have folks, the United Nation, choosing the XRP ledger to create carbon neutral solutions on the XRP ledger. It doesn't get any better than that. CBDCs, if not all, if if not most CBD, if not eighty five percent of the CBDCs will be released on it will be on the XRP ledger, and the rest will possibly be used on XLM, maybe Cardano, um, maybe Algorand, maybe XDC, but about eighty five percent of those CBDCs will be used on the XRP ledger. That's my speculation. 
Don't hate me for it. That's just my best guess. But that's all I got to say for that. I could talk about XRP and other digital assets for the longest. But if you made it this far, folks, please make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. Click that notification bell so you'll be notified. I'm going to go over this price and I'm going to let you go. Right now, we have a total market cap of $2.04 trillion. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is still at 39.6%. That's all right. If it gets down to 35%, I believe we will be in off season, folks. It will be insane. But I'm telling you, just bear, just bear in mind um, if you know, like if you're in this game and you um, are upset about the the low dips, the 75 percent dips, there will be 75 percent dips. But then there will be three thousand gains if you cannot stomach the 75 percent dips. Then you cannot. Then you should not be able to be around for the three thousand or five thousand gains. I'm sorry that that may sound harsh, but it's the harsh truth. Just because something drops doesn't necessarily mean that the world is going to end. It doesn't mean that. It just doesn't mean what you think. It just means they're shaking out the weak hands, and you have to have a, you have to have a solid stomach to be in this game, folks. I'm telling you, it's coming. This is the new way. This is the new. This is the way things are going to be. This is the new digital world. Just hold on. HODL, H-O-D-L. Hold on for dear life. But I digress, folks. We're going to get into these prices, and I'm going to let you go. Currently, we got Bitcoin at 42710 We got Ethereum at 3260 BNB at 480 Cardano at $1.51. It's up 8.44%. Solana at 142 xrp at 76 cents is still up three percent for uh seven days we got luna coming in at 81 dollars polka dot 26 dollars dogecoin 16 cents avalanche at 88 dollars and 70 cents matic 2034 cents shiba inu at um, the 14 spot is still hanging in there, folks. It's still hanging in there. But that's it for me, folks. Like I said, if you haven't done so already, hit the like and the subscribe button. And that video that I was talking about of why ISO of what ISO 222 is and why it's important to you and why you should care should be popping up here at the end of the video. As always, stay focused, stay locked in. Peace. So I want to turn to you. Thank you. Uh, for a moment, Mr. Brooks, um, if, if you were king for a day and you were going to tell us, uh, here's what you need to do to, to structure the regulatory framework in, in a minute and 39 seconds, tell us what that would look like. I mean, I can barely introduce myself in a minute and 39 <laughs> seconds, Congressman. Uh, I come back to the concept of parity. I don't know why we believe that incumbent institutions are risk free and anything new is highly risky. So if I have a platform built on a blockchain that is doing lending, I don't know why it's so hard for us to say that can participate in our banking system. If I decide that XRP is a security, why won't we let it list on a U.S. exchange? The problem is we treat crypto assets differently from all other assets. And the answer is just recognize them for what they are. These are assets that represent some underlying activity. It could be a network. It could be an application. They have a value that people are willing to buy and sell at. Let them in. Can you that would see be those? Oh, there's two votes. Let me try. Do you see <laughs> IMF holding crypto assets in the future? Oh, shit. They're over here. That's easier. You want to take one? Go for it. The first one's for you. IMF. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. Uh, I think we uh, stunned uh, Ross into my silence. My position is uh, very clear. XRP is not a security.